Hello, Sysphere here again. Uh, today we're looking at the new snapshot. It's been obviously a few weeks since we've had one. These are the ones in preparation for 1.7. So today we're looking at 13w36a-b. Um, there's a B come out because one of the new changes I wanted to show you was absolutely knackered in the A one. So what's actually in this? Um, absolutely hordes of stuff actually. We'll start off with options. Um, if we just hop in here and then we'll have our music and sounds, you will notice we now have controls for pretty much everything. So we've got our main volume, we can do the music, the weather, for those people who might be afraid of thunder or anything. Uh, enemy monsters, probably quite hilarious to turn that off on your friend's machine so they don't notice. Players, friendly animals, blocks, uh, jukeboxes and so on. Uh, there's also this uh, super secret settings over here. Um, doesn't do a whole lot at the moment. Um, if you just press it. You seem to get lots of random different sound effects. Some of which I've not really heard before. Um, so they might be heading around somewhere or they might be tweaked versions. I have been told if you click this enough, there are a couple of songs hiding in there as well, but I've not found them yet. Resource packs. Now, as you can see, I haven't really got any resource packs at the moment. Just the default one. Um, okay, then. Ben's custom, I don't know about that. Anyway, um, you can actually select multiple resource packs from your list here and go over there. And the way it works is it will go ahead and load... If I remember, I'll get this the right way around. It will load the bottom one first, then the next one up, and anything in this one that exists in this one, it'll overwrite. And anything that exists in this one that's not in this one won't get overwritten, basically. And it does that with each one right up to the top. Either that or it does it down the way. It's one of the two ways. I can't remember. But that means you can load multiple packs together. So... If you had one that had certain sounds or whatever, you could have that, and you could have textures from a different pack without having to hold them all apart. So that's uh, entertaining a little bit there. Controls. Again, more options moved around. And if we hop down here, if you like to rearrange what buttons run your hotbar slots, you can do that as well. And I've all got really useful reset buttons. So in the case I have my inventory is I, just because I'm to use the inventory button for other things. And if you hit reset, just easily turn back. Uh, I'm just also going to hop out because if we just go to uh, create a new world, um, there we go. Under the world types, you've got our default, which is the same as before. Uh, super flat, which you also recognize, and large biomes. But you also have world type amplified. Um, so it's just for fun, requires beefy computers. I will show you an amplified one in a little bit. But at the moment, I will just mention they look bloody fantastic. So the first sort of main thing is going to be looking at in here is the fact that there are new biomes and there are hordes and hordes of the buggers. Um, here we have a nice little one. Just pop up F3. Uh, oh, I'm in a river there. Let me just go. This is a Mesa or Misa or whatever you pronounce it. If you want to sound like um, Jar Jar Binks, it's probably Misa. Something like that. Um, so this is a, the Misas or Mesas and it's sort of layered uh, clay blocks. So we've got this nice uh, pattern here. Some people call them disco mountains. And obviously, that, that as you see, that's uh, hang on, a Mesa plateau. That's a Mesa BL, or the Mesa Plateau. Um, and there's a few varieties of the, the different ones as well. So the, these are the uh, Mesas. Uh, there we go. I'm going to go ahead and hop into a couple of other maps just to show you some of the other ones in a second. Um, I'll also show you an odd little thing now. When you land from a height, you will actually produce particles. Um, the higher you are, the more you produce. Although from the creative flight, you tend to produce a lot anyway, because I think it probably counts all the time you're in the air as falling. So if you just go down, there you go, see a little ring. But if you just do a little bit, just a little ring. 
And those particles will actually fall down the sides of cliffs as well, which is uh, kind of cool. So just uh, do one more. There we go. Just run off down there. So, utterly pointless, that bit, but uh, entertaining. All right, well, the sun's going down, so let's uh, hop into another world and have a look at the biomes in there, shall we? All right, so we're just in another world here, and I can see we're in some ice mountains, um, which look fairly normal, and uh, probably some ice plains over there. But if I move backwards a little bit, you notice I'm in ice plains spikes. Uh, well, spikes be out. I still don't know what half the little bits on the end mean. But this is one of the rare variations of biomes. Ice spikes. And bloody lovely looking things, these. Uh, nice little blobs. You will notice the ice, though, is quite unusual in the fact that you can't see through it. That's because this is actually one of the various new blocks, and it's called packed ice. Now, packed ice does have a special property to it. Let's just uh, get ourselves a lava bucket there. There we go. As you can see, the packed ice, as well as uh, being totally opaque, will not melt. Okay, that was a little strange. Uh, but it's still slippery, like normal ice. I've got to admit, I would prefer it to be transparent as well. Um, don't know if that happened or not. And uh, then we've got all these nice little tall ones and everything. So, so th this is a rare one, this one. Uh, but quite nice. So, moving on. And here we are in Extreme Hills. This is Extreme Hills Plus. Um, to be honest, looks like mostly normal hills. Um, this extreme hills here. Oh, just realized we'd not be a bit, but that's something else. Yeah, big attention. Um, so this is extreme hills. Uh, you will notice there are various patches where there is just no grass or anything, and it's just a bunch of gravel or stone. Also, uh, a lot of higher elevations, you will notice um, snow cover in areas as well. Just give a sort of authentic touch. Conveniently, we happen to also have another couple of biomes sitting around. So if we head over to this one, we have the birch forest. So this is just birch trees and nothing else. Uh, actually, really quite tall birch trees around here. And over here we have the roofed forest, which is these big, wide, flat trees. If we just head down in here, uh, you notice are quite thick and chunky. And you also have random giant mushrooms just sort of growing in areas. Uh, so there's a domed one, a couple of flat ones, flat one with a pig on it. So now the careful. And there's uh, just one more I want to show you just now. Um, to be honest, there are others uh, and variations and little rare ones, but they're an absolute pain in the butt to find. Um, no, so I tell, I tell a lie, I don't want to show you two of them, I want to, so I want to show you two, not one. It's late, It's it's been 35 degrees in here today, I've, I've got an excuse. Um, oh, no, there's one as well, uh, free. <laughs> Come with me. Sunflower Plains. See, you just randomly encounter them. Sunflower Plains, that's one of our new blocks, sunflowers, and they face uh, east. Yes, east, yep. And they're all over the place, nice and pretty. Uh, a few other flowers and stuff. I'm gonna show you all the various plants and everything after the biomes. As it says, <laughs> hell of a lot of things going on in here. Right, to the next biome. Oop, and that's us arrived in the next one. This is Savannah, which as you can see, uh, little grasslands with trees, um, quite flat trees at the moment, they're made out of jungle wood and oak leaves, but that might change. Also, there's these lovely little sections over here that are just uh, dirt, which looks quite nice. Now, obviously, if you look down here, there's dirt next to grass, and we know that grass spreads onto dirt. 
So this will all disappear eventually, won't it? Uh, no. The reason being is that actually there's a new type of dirt. If we just uh, hop in here quickly, um, ignore this one for the moment, but the dirt here is um, free with a value of zero. Uh, there's also Podzil, which you will find in, uh, I think it's a pine biome if I remember rightly, which is sort of like leafy dirt, which is data value two. However, as not shown in here, data value one is missing. This is data value one dirt, and grass will not spread onto it, so you can build lovely little things like this. You could also use a sort of an adventure map if you feel like, that you could have a puzzle that only showed up as the grass grew and then left uh, certain bits of dirt behind, which would be quite cool. I haven't checked if uh, mushroom grass, um, mushroom grass? Oh, whatever it's called. Uh, what is it called? Mycelium, that's it. I haven't checked if mycelium spreads on it or not, but I would guess it probably doesn't, um, with the way it's set up. So that's your savannah, and with these uh, nice mountains, um, this may be an amplified one, I can't remember. Um, let's see, savannah M, and I think that's a savannah plains over here. Is that right? Let's just drift in and find out. Ah, savannah Plateau, there we go. So it's a nice sort of high flat area with uh, lots of trees and uh, world holes, obviously, as per usual. Yeah, so I think it's possibly amplified. Right, final one that we want to look at for the moment. As I says, there are other ones, but I just haven't located all of them yet, basically. And Swampland. Um, swampland, not changed all that much, but it's got these uh, nice little bits here where it's just sort of uh, broken up edges. Um, oh, and these are the uh, new reeds. Uh, they're just recolored depending on biome. Hmm. Different color there, odd. Uh, but it's got these nice little uh, broken bits around the edges, kind of like a swamp might have, really. Uh, so it gives it a little bit more of a uh, sort of swampy effect, which is uh, quite nice. Um, well, so we'll try to figure out where on earth I put the coordinates of this. I did manage to accidentally locate another biome that I hadn't found yet, which was the uh, Mega Tiger. So let me just quickly hop over to that. There we go. So it's uh, Mega Tiger, as you can uh, see. The Tiger? Tiger? I don't know. So I'm calling it Mega Tiger anyway. Um, all these big, really quite fat trees, they're really quite tall. There's the uh, Pozzo, that's the other type of dirt, which I think looks sort of leaf covered. And there are all these bits of uh, mossy cobblestones sitting around all throughout this uh, biome. So that's another place to get your hands on the mossy cobblestone if you wish. See, a lovely chunk of it there. But that's, that's about it in regards to the biomes. As I says, there's probably a few that I have missed. Um, but let's have a look at the other features that have come in as well. Okay, I uh, very nearly forgot. Um, actually, I tell a lie, I did forget. I'm filming this after the rest of the video you've not watched yet. Ooh, time travel. Um, I promised to show you an amplified world type. Uh, well, if you just have a look, we're at Y64. And this is an amplified world. Normally, your world will only go up to 128. But if you see this uh, lovely little island here, which is appearing as I head up, you can see we're clearly well above 128, and we're still going. And in fact, this one actually goes up to 237 high. So that's uh, your amplified world type, which um, it looks absolutely insane. Lovely, really. Um, there's a lot of other really nice ones like this. You know, there's a lot of these weird floating bits on amplified type as well. But you could you could live on this island quite happily. Yeah, check that out. Yeah, 
Quite nice. Anyway, back to the rest of the stuff. And fishing! Yep, I know, fishing was absolutely boring as hell. Um, and in fact, in the village challenge video, we pretty much take the piss out of fishing on a regular basis. What do you mean you've not watched the village challenge video? Go watch the village challenge videos! Anyway, uh, fishing has been greatly improved. I think they've been taking a little lesson from World of Warcraft, um, and then some, because World of Warcraft fishing is kind of boring anyway. But you'll see the, the water here is nice and calm. So let's just get our rod out. There we go, so that's a lure in. And you will notice little splashes uh, starting to come up. That's obviously the, the fish are interested. Uh, there they are, splashing away. Oh, oh, find his foot down. There we go. You see there was a little trail and that shows that the fish is heading towards your lure. So it should make fishing a little bit easier to figure out when you're going to catch something. As on multiplayer servers and stuff can be a bit laggy and very, very difficult to catch a bloody fish, really. You can actually make your life a little bit easier as well, as you've got books for enchanting your fishing rod. You have uh, Luck of the Sea, um, obviously one, two, and three. And what that does is it enchants your rod so that you're more likely to get other items, because it's not just fish you catch, you can catch as far from where most things. Um, so you've got fish, you can catch everything like books, bits of clothing, etc. And as a good nod to World of Warcraft, you can also catch uh, junk boots, which are severely damaged uh, leather boots. You also have the three levels of lure, which just makes it more attractive to fish, so you can actually get some fish. You can now catch uh, raw salmon, which you can turn into a cooked salmon, as you can eat it as food. You can get the clown fish. Um, there's not a cooked version of it, but I recommend not really eating the clown fish as it does do you a bit of damage. And then if you're feeling nearly suicidal, there's a puffer fish. And if you decide to eat that, um, let me just see if I can uh, hop into survival and get a bit of hunger on so I can see it, show you the damage that it, it causes. Um, I'll have to run around a bit so I'm actually hungry probably. Yeah. Okay, jump cut time. So I'm now a little bit hungry. Uh, no effects on me. And uh, let's just eat this delicious puffer fish. Got hunger free, poison four, and nausea two. So don't eat the puffer fish. Otherwise, that will happen. There you go, so that was quite unpleasant. Uh, the puffer fish does have a use, however, and that's that it can be used in a portion of water breathing. So, just drink that up. Actually, find some water that's deep enough to get into, that would help. And as you can see, my little bubbles are not going down as I can now breathe underwater. But, uh, Useful new little addition. So, that's fishing. What else has they added? <laughs> well, they've added even more. Uh, feel free to take a break and come back, as I probably will be at this moment as I get the next section ready. Oh, looky looky! More things! <laughs> yeah, there are hordes of things in this update. Um, let me just switch back into normal mode. Uh, there we go. So item frames. Now, as you previously were, you hit an item frame like this, and off it goes. If you had an item in it, that would be the same. A couple of changes. First off, if you have a named item in a frame and look at it, it shows the names. So this is my Dirk Diggler. And previously, if I hit this, I would get both. But now, there we go. I get the sword and hit it again. And I should have got the frame, don't ask me whether... Oh, there it is. It was a bit bizarre. Just like that. Looks like item bouncing is a little misbehaving. So, new blocks. As I was mentioning, you've seen a few of these already and a bit have been through. So this is your... Um, oh, I forgot what it's called now. Uh, packed ice, that's the one. You're unmelting, solid, but still... Slippy ice. 
uh, your Podzo, that's your sort of leafy one, which we showed you in the Mega Tiger. These are now the missing uh, monster blocks. So if we break them, we just check, yep, easy difficulty. We now get ourselves some silverfish. There we go, as those three were missing previously. Now there's been a whole load of plants added, as you can see. Um, first off, these is just your grass and your fern. But if I just hit it with some bone meal, you actually get tall grass. And that also has an interesting side effect in the fact that if you're standing inside this, mobs can't see you. So if you had a whole load of mobs after you, you've done that. Totally invisible, which is uh, quite entertaining. Fern, you can do the same thing and have a double height one. There we go. Now, this here is the poppy. That was previously the rose, so that's changed. Uh, can't remember what mozzies are called, but... There's uh, some more flowers there, there's some more, and another one. These are tulips in a variety of different colours, so you've got red, orange, so officially all annoying. Uh, white one, uh, I think this class as purple, I'm, hang on. That's better. Uh, daisy, I think. Sunflower, which you've seen earlier, which as it says, uh, faces um, east over there. So useful. I've forgotten what that is. That's um, that lilac, that's what it is. Uh, this is a rose bush, and this is a peony. I suppose probably because the roses you normally do find on the bush rather than individually, so that makes uh, sense for that change. There's been a slight redstone change as well. You'll see in here, that little yellow bit there, that's one of the uh, weighted pressure plates, which were known as one of the most useless items in the redstone update. And to this day, I've never found a good use for them. Uh, they used to measure sort of stacks of items, but really weren't much use. Well, what they also do now is they measure entities. So I'm an entity, so that's measured me there. Let's pop a creeper in there. It says there's a creeper. Oh, it says there's two creepers, three creepers. Four creepers. So that's quite good for measuring how many mobs or whatever might be in an area. There's one odd little thing in regards to creepers now, and I'm not really sure why this even exists, because I can't think of a valid use for it. But flint and steel will now set off a creeper, which is an odd little thing to do, really. Oh, there go all the flowers. Um, almost like a weird creeper face, in a way. Not quite sure what use that is, but that's it's entertaining. There's a final thing that I want to show you, and well, final two things, but they're sort of related to each other. So uh, let me just set that up, and we'll look at it as we're almost there. Okay, final things. So this is in regards to commands and command blocks. We'll just pop one down here. Now you recognize up here, this is where obviously you normally type our commands. So we'll say hi in the case of that. As you can see, it says hi, just in the corner there. But when you open up a command block again, it shows what the previous uh, command output was. So now if we change it, we know the last one was say hi. And now the command is set to say hello, so for what it says say hello. So that's useful if you're changing something and want to compare it to what was on it previously, which is quite useful. But in the wonderful world of commands, um, other than the fact that there are also now an absolute ton of commands in regards to stats, like killing certain mobs, etc., um, which are so many of them, I think I read something like 700 odd or something equally ridiculous. Um, so I won't be covering out here. But as well as that, you can use the summon command, which, let's see here, and this one's set up to summon a falling sand entity. So if you watch this block very carefully over here, which if I just select some of, is clearly yellow stained clay, 159 and date value 4. And I do this. Now it's like grey stained clay, so it's gone from data value 4 to data value 8. 
So the summon command can be used the same way as the falling sand trick, which you use to delete blocks or swap blocks or spawn them or whatever. Um, I mean, if I was to just put this uh, up a little, so let's put up 88 and I will change that to two. Um, oops, that changed the time because I'm not deleting. There we go. And now spawn in the block. And I can just uh, obviously swap it, same as before. Change that to a six. There we go, and different block. So the fact you can actually do this in vanilla now, um, obviously you have to have command blocks, uh, but that's uh, pretty damn awesome. And that works, the uh, commands that you can use in the summon commands, works with pretty much everything that you could sort of spawn that's an entity. Uh, let me just check, I'm, there we go, easy difficulty. Just watch up the hill, we have a ghast riding a giant. So it looks like a giant head. It's uh, quite entertaining there. Uh, if we just go down and have a look at the command, uh, basically just summon the ghast there, and it just happens to be riding a giant. There we go. Two of them now, and I'm sure they don't like me at all. <laughs> there you go. So that's uh, the snapshot 13w36a and b. Hordes of stuff in it. If you didn't catch all of that, I recommend sort of rewatching uh, for the bits that you want. But that's about it, so thanks for watching and bye bye. That is gonna be bloody awesome. <laughs> yeah, you might want to walk away. <laughs> um, let's try that launch again, shall we?